Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the X1 Bros. We are your positive gaming and Xbox community. Thank you very much for tuning in yet again on another week of awesomeness, another week of amazing Xbox glory, gaming glory and goodness. Thank mm-hmm. you for being here. This is podcast number 342. As always, I'm joined by the bros, the X1 bros. First and foremost, it's Mr. McSpicy. Hello. Next up, we've got Jordan the Man. Hello. And last but not least, I am X1. Welcome to the show, guys. So ha- so good to have you. This is the last show of 2020 for the X1 bros. Oh. We always take the two weeks off between Christmas and New Year's. So we will be back officially on January 8th. That's the next time we'll be back live here streaming for the podcast. Also, that's the next time you'll be able to download a new podcast for us. So have a great holiday season. Have a great Christmas. New Enjoy year. yourselves. And let's ring in the new year. And uh, it's going to be it's awesome. It's exciting to look forward to for gamers. New Year's is one of my favorite time of year. So is Christmas. Christmas, New well, Year's. Well, because we actually have time off to play. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> right. That is right. So we will be back January 8th, everybody. On YouTube, we will still be dropping videos probably about two a week. We'll drop over there. So make sure if you haven't yet, come subscribe to us on YouTube and hit that notification bell. Be informed whenever a new video drops, whenever our podcasts go lives. And let's jump into it, guys. Last podcast of the year. We talked a lot about Cyberpunk 2077 last week. Mm-hmm. We gave our first impressions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It's our game club month too. It's our it? game club <clears throat> game of the month. Yeah. Jordan, I would like to start with you. There is some news that has come out about Cyberpunk 2077. Would you rather address some of those issues first, or do you want to talk about your personal experience with the game? Um, I mean, I don't know. I think they go hand in hand, right? Yeah. I mean, CD Projekt Red has been uh, going through the ringer this week. They have <laughs> they've, been they've taking had, it in the face. They've, a little bit. Uh, they've had a rough week. Let's uh, let's I'll talk. I'll, let's talk about your personal experience first. Well, so uh, and go through that as as the game stands. So my my opinions actually really don't much change from last week. Now that being said, a lot of the contention and the arguments and and a lot of the stuff that's going on is revolving around the base consoles. Uh, we're talking Xbox One, PS4, right? The 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 base consoles. Uh, for the game, because if if you didn't know, which you most people probably know at this point, uh, the game in a lot of cases for a lot of users is is unplayable on on those base consoles. On the base consoles, so on the I because yeah. I actually played it on the Xbox One X last week, and I played it on the Series X. Obviously, on the Series X, I had very minimal issues. Mostly, it was animations uh-huh. and stuff like that. The Xbox One X, I had no, I had no, I had some frame drops, some some freezing moments, but the game was very playable. Our cousin uh, in England, he has the PlayStation, uh-huh. and he said, "I can't play the game." Like yeah. it's, and I was like, "Well, I've not had issues." He said, "No, I can't play it. It doesn't, it doesn't work." So PlayStation, in particular, has been having some issues. Well, there's been a lot on Xbox as well. Now we're not talking the PS5. Right, this so. is just, or or yeah, this is just. If you bought a console from 2013, yeah. this is affecting you. This yeah. is affecting you, absolutely. So, Can we bring up some <laughs> cyberpunk gameplay oh, sure. gloriousness? No, but yeah, it's it's been it's been. I know even talking in our own community, it's been it's been hit and miss on the the series S and the series. Or sorry, 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 the one S and the one X. Uh, but anyway, base consoles alone, we we know they're having a lot of issues, and it is rough out there. Uh, for a lot of gamers, which is why Cyberpunk's or sorry, CD Projekt Red has been taking a lot of flack this week. Yeah, and I mean it's it's justifiable. I would be, I mean, if I bought a sixty dollars game and it's not working, I would be frustrated too. So I'm not, you know, I I, I get where the frustration is coming from. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because I'm playing on Series X, right? Series X, PlayStation Five, and PC. Although they still do have problems, which we'll talk about as well, it's much more playable and you can at least enjoy yourself through the game, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot of visual bugs and, and technical bugs and stuff like that, but the game is Speaking much more playable. Bugs, we can't watch it right now, so <laughs> yeah. I'm going to throw it back on the main cam. So, but anyway, my, ex- my experience this week, uh, I've gotten a lot, uh, a lot more time with the game. I think, I, like I said, I don't think my opinion changes much from last week with my initial first impressions sure i last week i was talking about uh, i understand why the game was delayed i can also see them justifying another delay i think that still holds true i mean if they would have delayed it another six months or so i think we could have avoided a lot of what's going on this week that being said i'm still having fun with the game i think the core of the game the bones of the game are are there they're really good sure uh i think the the city is fun I think the characters are fun and engaging and really interesting uh, where I'm getting. Uh, the story is really good. 
and the gameplay itself with the RPG, I'm, I'm starting to get used to the gun system. I'm, I'm getting better guns. I, I mean, it's obviously still not like Doom and Call of Duty gunplay. Sure. But it's it's really good and really fun. I think the core of the game is is really good. I was talking to one of my friends today, and he, and he said it perfectly. He said it's the, the soul of the game is good. And yeah. I was like, yeah, it is. The soul of the game is good. But that being said, it does... It does. There, the game is being held back by a lot of the issues it has via bugs, um, technical issues uh, that I've had and stuff like that. Now, there but, was there was a patch that dropped today, a fifteen gig patch. Was it today? I believe. Yeah, earlier today. Yeah. What what patch was that? Now did that fix a lot of the bugs or? Well, it's one of the, the patches. So what what they're doing is uh, CD Projekt Red has been coming out on on all their social medias, basically trying to essentially clean up the mess. Right. They're talking about how uh, they did say that they're going to support the game. They're not giving up on it. They they want to earn their our trust back, essentially, right? Uh, uh, all that stuff. They're coming out with three big patches to fix a lot of the issues. Sure. One this in December before the Christmas holiday, before all the dev developers go home for Christmas. There's going to be another big one in January and then another big one in February. Okay. And hopefully by that point, a lot of the issues will be fixed. I think... They're trying to just get it playable on those base consoles right now, but that's uh, that's where we're at right now. So that's kind of the the rough draft of patch. I have to say we're watching we're, we're watching right this now. from this is a PC version of the game that we're watching with ray tracing turned on. Ray tracing makes a huge difference. Look at this; it's a pretty game. It's yeah. very well. And this is this is what I'm excited for because if you're playing on Series X or PS5, you're technically playing a backward compatible version of the game. So I'm excited. We're gonna next get this. year. Of course, all the patches and stuff need to come out first, right? I mean, but I'm excited for next year when they do the next gen updates, sure. the, the optimizations yeah. for the new consoles, because we're gonna get. It won't be probably PC like the full PC settings, but we're gonna be close. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna Absolutely. have a lot. Of, I, it's gonna look really good, I think, and that's what I, that's what I'm really excited for. Anyway. After another weekend on Cyberpunk, I am I really am enjoying the game. I think the bones of the game and the soul of the game is good. They're is a lot holding it back though via the bugs so overall you know. last week super into the game it was your first impression yeah. yeah this is let's say me first second impressions 2.0 well, you're to, deeper into the to game to be honest with you i'm still super into the game it's all i've been playing this week yeah. it's taking on it's taking it's taking me away from world of warcraft and you know you got to do the dailies in that game yeah. so what but, what do you enjoy the most about the game the story right now the story is really picking up the characters from the side stories, the side jobs is what they're called, are starting to, not not like super intensely, right? But they're starting to slowly interweave into the main story. Okay. Um, more so the main story, there's things that happen in the main story and there's characters that you meet in the main story that are now kind of interweaving into some side stuff. Like they're there, they're they're doing stuff with you, they're making comments. It's really cool. And that's what, that's, that's what makes this game fun. But the story right now is really fun, and I'm really enjoying it. And your biggest criticism of the game at this point well, well, the bugs. is the bugs. I mean, <laughs> what, what's a common bug that you have ran into? Uh, common is probably mostly like visual stuff, like textures don't load properly. Well, your uh, wheelchair seen, experience. But there's my yesterday. wheelchair experience. Can you talk, let's, let's talk about your so, wheelchair experience. You were streaming the game yesterday. Yeah, so what happened is I was, I was in a hospital. <laughs> it wasn't a very good hospital. But anyway, I was in a hospital... And I was shooting down this hallway, and there happened to be a guy in a wheelchair in that hallway. And I think what he did is he was like, oh, shoot, there's gunfire going on. I need to get out of the way. So he immediately f takes his wheelchair, and he just floats in the air, <laughs> which actually helped me out because then I could just shoot straight under him. That but uh, you don't want to hit civilians. Yeah, you know, you know, you really don't. The, just the cops are brutal oh, in this man. game. The, the, the Night City Police Department, they come after you. But uh, it's uh, it's it's. That's probably the funniest. Well, one of the well, funniest ones I've had. I did. I was watching him stream it, right? And this yeah. guy, this guy in the wheelchair, does that. And then he like freezes, like he's no longer moving in a very weird, like nightmarish, undead kind of like posture. the shiny, creepy way, like totally like the shiny. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like he was just frozen in time, floating up in the air, total horror movie. And Jordan leaves, and I was in chat. I was like, Jordan. You better take a picture of that. <laughs> yeah. You have so one I, chance in your life I went back to take and, a picture uh, of a guy in a wheelchair in this pose and, and how it happened, right? In retrospect, it probably wasn't the most politically <laughs> correct thing to do on a stream. Sure. Because Jordan went into photo mode. And and was like, he was like, he, he took a good 20 minutes <laughs> making sure the lighting was correct, <laughs> the aperture's good, you know, uh, just like, and it was... And you did your pose. You posed yeah, in front pose, of him. I was, I was, I, yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. It was a good picture. I'll, I'll publish it, was, it. It was funny. 
It was you good. Know, but so I've gotten a lot of visual bugs. I haven't had so much of this in, in the past couple days, but at the beginning of the week and last week, I had a lot of cars. They were like halfway into the world. Oh, okay. So they, and they were, so it looked like, they're they're like they were just scraping, cars. Along, yeah. they're scraping along the concrete. So your set, your your bugs on your side mostly visual bugs. Any any game or mission I did breaking have, bugs? I will have to say the funniest one. I actually don't even know if this is a bug. I think it's a bug, but it might not be. This guy just might have had enough. Okay. So <laughs> I was walking down the street and some guy just fell out of the air and died. And I looked up and there was building. He might have jumped. Like I don't know. It might not and have he been just a bug. Exploded right? Just well, he just no. He plopped. And he did. <laughs> Why did you record that one? Well, it's like, I think I may have. That, uh, but it was uh, it was like I and I looked up and there was buildings up there. So I was like, maybe he just had. I enough. don't. Yeah, I was like, I it don't know. It is a dystopian if, yeah, universe. So I don't want to say that because I don't know if that was a bug or if that's just built into the the world building. You know, that is too but, funny. But nothing game breaking for you. Well, no, mostly. I, well, just I mean, I don't stuff. know if you want to count this as game breaking. Uh, I haven't had any of them this week, but last week I think the hot fix they did last week may have fixed some of these. Okay, there was some times i'd get stuck in pillars and i couldn't move and i'd have to reload the save there's been other times where all of a sudden like uh certain buttons wouldn't work like i couldn't jump or go into my menus and i'd have to reload reloading always fixed it so i don't know if you'd count those as game breaking but as soon as i reloaded it i fixed it and i was able to get back in but yeah that being said like i like i was talking about i really enjoy the game i think the core of the game is there and it's solid i think a lot of the bugs and the issues are holding this game back I think in about six months or so, this game will wear, be where it needs to be. Uh, so and be where you, I guess be where it should have been at launch. Do you right? think they one hundred percent should have delayed this again? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think they should. I mean, you can't really argue with say it. it's ready. You no, know? let me ask you this: before e- we, even on the the PS five X Series X and PC, we're still having issues. Given our issues are not as bad as people that can't actually play the game. Yeah. Right. There's let me ask still you this: issues. I have a friend. Shout out to Craig. Oh. His wife purchased this game for him. He has an Xbox One. He might have an Xbox One X, but let's just mm-hmm. say he has an mm-hmm. Xbox One. Should he be worried, or is the big patch he's getting it at Christmas? Should he be worried about this game, or is that big patch going to to solve it for Christmas? It it's hard to say what that patch does. Right. I haven't looked at the patch notes. I assume it's just all bug fixes and stabilization okay. stuff. But it's hard to say what it'll do. If this will take out a majority of the non-playable stuff that's happening, or if uh, maybe we need to wait for the January patch and the February patch. Someone asked me this question last night when I was streaming. If you have, and this is what I said, and I'll, I'll probably just give them the same advice. If you have an Xbox Series X, a PS5, or you're playing on the PC, With I would good hardware on the PC. Yeah, I would say if you want to play the game, go ahead. You'll be able to play it and have fun, right? If you have an older generation console. It might be worth waiting. Even a One X, even a One X, because I've I've seen the issues on the One X as well. Really, there might well, yeah, because there's a substantial leap between the One X and the Series X. You know what I mean? Like, okay. where I think I think the new consoles are essentially brute forcing through a lot of the yeah, the issues, right? Gotta love that brute force. So, yeah. So, if you have a base console, and it, it hurts me to say this because I I like the game and I I want other people to enjoy it as well because like I said, the core of the game is fun. I think if you have a, a PS4, PS4 Pro, Xbox One X, right, the, all the hey, original Xbox, maybe wait till the January patch, maybe February patch before you pick before it up. jump in. If you have a Series X or the PC, I'd say go ahead and jump in because from my experience... Brute force. And from basically the general consensus, it, is it's at least running. There is its problems. Yeah, but they're not game breaking. It's but it's running right. A lot of, like I said, a lot of the contention and stuff seems to be coming from those older consoles. Spicy, you raised your hand. This he, patch that's coming right before Christmas. If you have a older console, you've got it for Christmas. Should you be worried? Are you hopeful? So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, return it. Okay. Um, and the reason why I have like numbers in front of me, like I did, a, I really care about this game. Sure. And I went through and did. Uh, I mean, I have like all my notes here of all my experience and everything that's going wrong. Um, so the OG Xbox, the the box that came out in 2013, right? Okay. On the PlayStation 4, it drops to 17 frames. That's uh, con- that's unplayable. Constantly. Yeah, that's unplayable. And um, watching how I, I watched a lot of like Digital Foundry stuff, they had a moment where the game just stopped for 60 seconds. Fro- frozen? Frozen. I experienced that on the Series X, or not the Series X, the One X, multiple times. For about times. eight seconds, right? Yeah, and then it would continue on. Correct. This was a 60 second. So we're talking not 60 frames per second. We're talking one frame per 60 seconds. Wow. 
<laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So um, there's stuff like that. It's riddled with problems for base hardware. Um, so I would say if you have an OG Xbox or an OG PlayStation, I would wait until you have better hardware. Okay. And that's behind one of the reasons. I mean, Sony took it off their store because yeah. it's very unplayable at the Oh, I mean, you're talking seven-year-old hardware. And I looked up. This is funny because, uh, because of you know, I'm a Excel spreadsheet gamer. Mm. I'm I'm into this stuff. Um, the uh, the high-end graphics card at the time was the GTX 780. Okay. Uh, that runs this game at 12 frames per second. <laughs> so it's just so a, there is it's a beast. There is optimization. I, and when I say those numbers, that's what it's dipping down to. Yeah, so it's not like that all the time. Yeah, it's not, not like, like that yet. When all it dips, that's what it's dipping down yeah. to. So, um, And that was the high-end card at the time, right? Uh, the PlayStation or the PS4 Pro and the Scorpio um, runs at 1188p. And it's dynamic. It changes, but mm -hmm. it's generally at 1188p, and it runs at 21 frames per second. Okay, yeah, because that's I played on the 1X a good three hours, I'd say, on the 1X. Yeah. Had very minimal issues. The issues that I did have was the uh, freezing, but like eight and seconds, it was, and it would go on. It only happened twice in three hours. That's what it's dipping to again. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it is at 30 and 28 and 27, but it's at, at its worst, um, it's dipping down to, to, to 21 frames per second, right? So... Um, also, I keep in mind that because the dynamic resolution is changing, the OG Xbox and the PlayStation are playing this at 720 or under and still hitting 17 frames per second. Wow, so they've even scaled it down. Which I don't know if the PC version is. So no wonder there's scale. no there's no issue there. Well, there's less issues. It's playable. It's it's your typical open world issues that you're seeing visually in the game on the Series X, the PlayStation Five, because Jordan said it's just brute forces through the power. It's not optimized for any of the other consoles, but these have so much power it just brute forces. Well, that's my theory, right? No, I, th I mean, no, I think no, I'm I'm my so what I think is this game was meant for hardware, new sure, hardware, well, new yeah, hardware. Yeah, for yeah, next definitely. gen hardware. It was meant for the. You know, your GTX is at least 1080s. The Just think, the original launch date for this was May. Remember? Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, <laughs> yeah. it was delayed because yeah. of this. Um, so it, I, I think it was just, unfortunately, a product of the timing mm -hmm. of having an in-between game, last gen versus new gen. And I think CD Projekt Red was just optimizing it for the next gen hardware. And it's a big slip through the cracks but it happened where they did not play it and test it as much as they should have on the older generation the older hardware, generation. which because of the limitations on access to the new gen hardware, it's hard to get a PlayStation 5. It's hard to get a, a, a new Xbox, right? Um, so most people are playing this on old console, on the older consoles. On the well, old yeah, there's, there's more old consoles out there than correct. new, yeah. right? I don't know how many old, old 2013 consoles there are, um, but, and, and granted... You know, you have your PlayStation Pro and you have your, you know, your Scorpio one, you, you know, your yep. X editions, right? The problems aren't as bad on those, but a big chunk of people have that old hardware still. And that's mm -hmm. where these issues are coming from. Right. Um, so there are issues with that. With my review, can I, am I allowed yeah. to just your, give me your second impressions here? It's now. based on me playing this on next gen hardware on the yeah. Series X. Yeah. So um, Asterix. <laughs> correct. So and my review is kind of interesting. Me and Jordan talked pretty extensively about this game because we like this game. When I picture you guys talking, I picture you in smoking velvet <laughs> smoking jackets in in a library yeah. with a lot of wood mahogany. Uh, so what did you think of Gigi yeah. Street? <laughs> I yeah. thought Gigi Street was intense. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Be careful there. Be careful <laughs> of that street. Um, so. So that's where my perspective is coming from. But I did do a lot of research on seeing what other people's perspective was. Mm -hmm. um, and I went, this is one of the few times where for a game I would go out and I went out and would see reviews sure. and what people were saying, right? Like on Metacritic and stuff like that. Um, it's interesting that the initial reviews were extremely high on both sides, on uh, journalists and on people. Critics, yeah. On critics. After a couple of days, then it started flooding in with bombing, right? Bombing reviews, right? And that makes me that makes me think that, A, journalists have access to the better hardware. 
Well, well they, of they were they, they were sure. actually only that was another big contention. Reviewers were not allowed to review. They didn't even have console copies. They were only a lot of those reviews They're that PC came out copy. were only PC. They weren't actually allowed the See, console stuff until later, which was another big contention that people are upset with CD Projekt Red on. Yeah, and I would argue the best place to play this game is on PC. Oh, yeah, I, I would agree. Because they have setting options that that when we go through this, it's going to be one of my... I have for pros and cons here. Um, they have like a, a density setting where you can change the amount of people on crowd, the street. Yeah, crowd density. Extremely important in this game. It's way too low on, on this... Com- backwards compatible version of the game. Okay. And we, we even though, about this, yeah, yeah, even though the console, like the Series X, could handle it, it's it's it handles it better than I think it's the it's up there as one of the top ways to play this game. Although I would say PC is better because of these options it's been given. Mm-hmm. Because it's a like backwards compatible version of this game, we do not have access to it to change oh. these settings, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to say what I'm about to say because this game is very polarizing. Yeah, well, absolutely. There's, people are going to hate what I say about it sometimes, and people are going to love what I say about it sometimes because it's polarizing. If you had these issues, it, you're going to you're going to hate this game. You're going to want to give it a zero. It doesn't deserve a zero, but you're going to want to give it a zero. Mm-hmm. For those playing on per, on ray tracing PC settings, uh, and you can crank up the settings that you want, you're probably going to say this game is a masterpiece, right? Besides the fact. That there are bugs like mm-hmm. floating wheelchairs and stuff like that, <laughs> yeah. right? And cars. Um, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to f- foreshadow what what my opinions are on this game based upon me playing on new hardware, and I understand the other side, mm-hmm. uh, people that just straight up can't play it. Sure. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to oh, be yeah. mad. And obviously, oh, you're yeah. going to give it. I would a be terrible. Mad. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I consider this game now going into my review. Sorry, I'm taking so <laughs> long. <laughs> into the review. Now into the review. <laughs> this game is an onion. Okay, it's got many, layers. many, like many that. layers. Shrek. <laughs> yes, nice. yes, it's, this game is Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> and because it released when it did, I think it's an unripe onion. <laughs> okay? Yeah. It's not yet fully ready to be S- peeled correct. back. Some of the layers on the outside are brilliant. Mm. I don't think any game d- did things better than this game. But as you get in and as you see the different layers, for every good thing... There is something that's holding it back. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, for example, I want to talk about the map. Because I think this space that we play in, this, this the playground, world, right? the, the arena, world. just, just the, the Night City and what's around Night City, I think it is the best map that has ever been made in any game ever. Whoa. Big statement. No, I would agree with that. It is the verticality, I mean that- how you can enter all m- a majority of the buildings, the detail... I want people to that are on like new gen hardware to just stop and look around what you see. It's just it's at a next different level, level world building. There has never been a map this good. Yeah. Okay. No, I completely agree with you. I th- like I, s- I was saying last week. I think Night City is one of the main characters one of the, the main game. Characters. Yeah. There has never been a game that has a better map. Period. I think so much time and dedication and detail went into this map. It blows my mind. The the garbage is that is thrown on the ground. All the different collectibles everywhere you go. It's got that Fallout vibe where there's just you know that right there that's unique just to this place, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and and it's just it's vertical. There's jumping puzzles. You can go sometimes through an elevator and you didn't realize you can go into that building that's a skyscraper but you can eventually and it's detailed inside right i think the map is the best map ever however what holds it back is the ai unplayable characters on the map that are wandering around aimlessly <laughs> they have no personality and 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 i think it's because we're on that backwards compatible version yeah. you mm-hmm. can't crank the density this is night city this is a 2077 high density place location Yet we only see a couple people, well, sometimes the same people, wandering around aimlessly, not right behind anything. each other. Yeah, right. So to that greatness, that pulls it back. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that the first person part of the game, I remember right, CD Projekt Red talking about this. They wanted it to be first person instead of third person because they wanted that immersion. Mm-hmm. And there are moments in this game. Jordan talked about it. I think last show. I think you might be talking about the same part. Yeah. Yeah. That like, you, because it's first person, you are just entranced. It's true. I don't think you get there lost. has, I don't think there has been a game 
that has had moments like that where you are that involved with characters Mm -hmm. and that involved with the story because of the first person aspect, right? Um, uh, What pulls that back, that immersion, again, so that's the greatness of this game, is the bugs. Floating wheelchairs. (laughs) Floating wheelchairs rip you right out of the game, right? The immersion. You're no longer in a city. You're no longer experiencing this. You're in a game. Yeah, correct. When that happens. Uh, the next thing, I'm just going to go quickly. Like I don't want to take a cold dash of water. I, I know <laughs> we're ta- I know I know we're talking about this a lot, but I think no, it's hey, important. Hey, take your time because this is important about how the gaming industry is right now in between consoles. Right? Um, I find that the gunplay is awesome. Oh, I think it's, it's crunchy. I think. It's oh, heavy. and the first time I got a good sniper, and the first time I shot that shot, and the heaviness of that, boom, yeah. and it. It felt good, and then the how you lean around corners I, I do seamlessly. Part, yeah. that, I think every game should have that. It's that to me is what Apex did with pinging. This game's gonna do with leaning. Yeah, because it's, it's automatic. It's natural. It never messes up. It never messes up for me, and it it just works well. Well, it works really well. And what's cool about mine? Sorry if you don't mind. Go me for jumping it. Go in, for it. Yeah. Is there's actually for for me the build that I have. There's a perk where I gain bonus damage from leaning Wild out leaning. behind cover. Correct. So, so it, it basically it, it's it makes me want to do it more. Right? So, for those of you who have not yet played the game, there's a mechanic in this game where when you're crouched or you're at a corner, it's auto and, leaning, and yeah. you're you aim, it will lean, it will automatically lean you around that corner so that you're not exposed, yeah. and it works flawlessly. When was it's, it's a really good. It's just so natural. It has a really natural feel to it. Games have done this before. I I, I forget what I want to say. It was one of the Battlefield games, but it, it didn't work great in that game. Same with uh, there's another game that did it, but in this game it works fantastically. Like I said, there's that perk that I signed up for, and I do it all the time. And it looks not only does it look cool, but it just works. Like you said, flawlessly yeah. for, for, for me. Awesome. I think the gunplay and how the guns work and how you can upgrade them, I, I think it's just an amazing... It's awesome. Can I, say, can I say what were they? Yes. they? They went for the Gears of War sniper headshots. I don't know if you guys have shot in someone's head off Well, yet, I've shot the house off with Johnny Silver. And <laughs> yeah. But uh, Gears of War style, uh, things explode. <laughs> um, so the greatness of the gunplay is pulled back again by... The Fallout 3, which is a great <laughs> game, the Fallout 3 AI on these bad guys, yeah. right? They are just dumb. The I'm not talking about the aimless corpses walking around in the streets that there's 15 You're of the same person. You're talking about distinct battles. Uh, distinct battles. Um, I think the AI needs work. Uh, to solve that, what I ended up doing, I mean, I played on hard originally anyways, um, but I've seen gameplay of playing on difficulty normal. If you play on normal, you have Game Genie in this game. You can just walk yeah. forward with a sword and kill everything. Mm. This game should be merged a little bit to have it say, normal is super easy, and hard is standard. Oh, really, so hard should be the Hard should be the play. standard, yeah. Okay, Because you really, I mean, role-playing games generally are hard up front, and as you unlock things, you get more to your play style, the game becomes more comfortable, Etc. Right, it gets God easier mode. as you play. Yeah. yeah, you start off as you can't die, and and you j- literally just have to press the joystick forward and slice and dice. <laughs> and once you get your first katana, it's awesome. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, I think the game should be a standard at at hard if you're going to play this. I think it's way more fun. The enemies are harder to handle. You have to be far more strategic dealing with snipers and stuff like that. Um, anyways, uh, on top of that, uh, I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up really quick because I don't want to talk about this forever. I think that the story and the voice acting is amazing. Oh, I think 100%. CD Projekt Red did an excellent job on the voice acting. I mean, and Keanu, bless his heart, I don't think he's the best speaker, <laughs> right? But I love him to death, and that's kind of why I like him because he talks a little like this, yeah. Yeah. you know? And But he did such a good job. I, I he did an amazing job in this game. I think I think he's the star, one of the stars of the show, uh, amongst the other actors too. They did an excellent voice acting job. The story's great. Um, o- overall, okay. So where do you put this right now? Yeah, it's, there's layers upon layers. I think this game should not have been released when it did. I think it should not have been released for the older consoles, the 2013 consoles. Mm-hmm. 
even maybe even the Scorpios and the PS4 Pros. Like just a next gen game. I think it should have been a next gen game. Do you think they should have said, "Okay, we're releasing it at our at our date that we said, December 10th, for next gen for previous consoles, it is coming and then have the date a month like Jan- the end of January." It's an interesting question because Witcher 3 when it came out it was buggy. It was really buggy. And it was like when you turned on that hair mode for Geralt, it <laughs> oh, yeah. was... NVIDIA, the it was, NVIDIA hair. It was the crisis of games. Yeah. It would chug your well, systems. Well, if you remember, the big... People forget Witcher is seen really fondly, but they forget the the controversy surrounding Witcher was that what was shown off was was not actually what the gameplay was. It was yeah. a, a super high PC version of... Not actually the console version, if you remember, yeah. and that was a big controversy when the game. Launched. Correct, and I think it's just how CD Projekt Red operates. Because, because I'm going to say a statement that's going to offend a lot of people, but other people may get it. Okay. I think in one year, this is going to be one of the greatest games ever made. I yeah. can see that. Yeah. I think in one year it will be. It, it definitely, like Jordan said, the soul is there, the spirit is there. Yeah. You can you can see the greatness there. It's just, it just do you think help. in a world this big that you need it to go live in order to f- to fix, to find and fix a majority of the bugs or well, do they just need I more mean, time? The bugs we're dealing with here, I think was a, I think they wanted to get it. I don't know what exactly they were doing internally, but I think they knew the state of the well, game, especially on the older consoles. Yeah. Well, so, the older consoles, of course. So Witcher three, okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I looked up some dates because, like I said, I did a lot of research because <laughs> yeah. I, I love this game um, and I love Witcher three. Witcher three released May 2015, had a lot of bugs. Yeah, I think weren't the first three patches bug patches. Correct. Yeah. It had a lot of bugs, a lot of issues. Um, also, something to note that's different on this release is they weren't dealing with old hardware. It, they had what what yeah, they had they were was two years old, three. so they had enough time. To make sure that there wasn't this on uh, one can of worms. One, yeah, okay. Correct. So it came out with bugs, just like we're seeing. It's similar to what we're seeing now with our release copy on our new hardware. Sure. It's it's those very kind similar. of bugs, which okay. are fairly standard. Maybe not in the amount, but that type of bug is standard on these on giant open world games. Correct. Um, so uh, it released in May 2015. The expansion Heart of, Hearts of Stone came out in October 2015. Yeah, it was just six months, wasn't six it? Six months, right, and yeah. then another six months in May 2016, Blood and Wine came oh, out. That was well, great. That's just that was pow, great pow, pow, pow. So one year, and it became the greatest game, I, in my opinion, the greatest game ever made. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think the same thing, this is, it may be controversial, because this game has a lot of heat and a lot of hate right now. I think in one year, this game is going to be on the top, one of the top of the list. We do live in an age where an initial review is... N- does it matter? We had we had this discussion on the channel last week in one of our videos, youtube.com forward slash X one bros, and it was have has Cyberpunk broken reviews? And at the time the reviews were all over the place. And now you know, a, a week out, two two weeks out, we kind of see with good reason they kind of are all over the place because depending on how you played, where you played, really what patch de- you had what patch right you had really determines your experience in this game. However, when all is said and done, I'm not sure reviews really matter anymore for games. Let's let's take a game like No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky released, well, it mattered in the first six months. Yeah, released to terrible, terrible. But we live in an age where with the Internet, with the tools and resources available to us and to video games and with perpetual support and investment, that game is one of the best games. Space, sp- it's the sure. standard, really, for space flight simulator, mm-hmm. space arcade simulator games that's out there today. Witcher, you just went over it, kind of had a similar experience. I think this will have a similar experience. However, having said that, I do think I don't think it is a good precedent. No, no, no. For sure. gamers yeah. to be so excited for a game to purchase their game up front. And then, particularly if you're not so, not someone that was able to get this new generation of hardware, that the game just doesn't work for you. Yeah, that's correct. that that is completely unacceptable. See, to me. and that's the variable that wasn't with Witcher Three. They were not dealing with old hardware. Well, it was strictly just. I mean, what is this one? They released over nine different consoles. The Witcher Three was literally three: PC, PlayStation, Xbox. 
And so and the thing with No Man's Sky is No, no Man's Sky just didn't have the features. It wasn't a broken yeah. game. So this is a little bit different. And, and I think that that's I also, and I do think that justifies a little bit of the rage that is out there. I, I do sure. think it's justifiable well, no, no, to I, the point that I, I think uh, CD Projekt Red did the right thing in saying, look, if you're not r willing to wait for the patches and you're on these consoles, then we will refund your money. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. and if you're Sony, you just don't want to deal with the hassle. Well, well I we think, think I think something we think there's happened. a little back yeah. and forth so slapping what, going on there. there. There's been a lot that's happened this week. Sony, uh, CD Projekt Red is going through a little bit of a. Can we? I don't. Just in case you haven't heard, Sony pulled oh. CD Projekt Red from their entire uh, yeah. old wool cyberpunk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. CD well, CD <laughs> <Pro>. <laughs> before they, so pulled cyberpunk <laughs> from their stores. You yeah. cannot get, a, uh, which is funny because now it's an Xbox. Digital exclusive, yeah. yeah, without even having to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, it just became exclusive. <laughs> yeah. That was the plan no, all along. So they they've been having a, a PR nightmare crisis. Crisis, you yeah. Crisis. They, I I don't know if it's the translation. You know what I mean? Because okay. they're 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 from uh, I believe it's Poland, uh, right? So and all anyway. But what had happened is, is CD Projekt Red came out and they basically they they're, they're essentially saying that they're taking response the executives are taking responsibility for how the game is we're dedicated to fix it blah blah, blah I like stuff, that right you know all this all this basically the good stuff you want to hear right sure. they did say if you're not happy with the game go ahead and refund it the problem with that is what happened is everybody flooded to the stores to refund it especially if you're on the base consoles right and, and I think most of it was from those base consoles um Sony in all honesty, we're just being honest here. Has a terrible refund policy. So, and Digi when I say terrible, yeah, digital refund policy. And when I say terrible refund policy, I mean it basically doesn't exist. <laughs> like, they, if you buy a game and you play three seconds of that game, it's yours. Done it's deal. Yours, right? Done. So that being said, when CD Projekt Red came out with that tweet that said, "Hey, if you had bought the game, please, you know, go, and you feel like you need a refund, go to the, your stores, whether that be Microsoft, Sony, or your local retailer, and get a refund." Right. So what happened was gamers were going back, particularly on Sony, to get these refunds. And Sony was, from what I understand, not doing it because their refund policy, like I said, is essentially non-existent. Sure. So then it's making Sony look bad. So what we think happened is Sony, is said, All Sony right, got let's mad. Let's just remove the game from the store. Yeah. And I, I, did, I did see something today on Twitter. I think there was some... Because CD Projekt Red had a big meeting with all their employees and stuff today, and everything's basically public now. There was a question asked about it, and th I think they said something about them and Sony came to an agreement. Okay, and and Sony pulled it, but I think that agreement was Sony was mad that they were the ones being made look bad. They 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 kind of you know slapped slapped them a little bit. Yeah, today. and said, hey, we're Listen, taking it off. And I do want to mention Freaky Ro. Welcome, Freaky Ro. It's so good to see you. By the way, in chat says uh, working at GameStop, we got an internal email about how we aren't taking returns on opened games. As a result of this. So it was, and Cyberpunk did say, tr do this first, and then if not. Yeah, Cyberpunk did say, contact them if you have trouble. There was just a lot of confusion, basically. Yeah. So now what had happened is, is Sony is giving refunds, and then they did take the game off the store. Yeah. For the time being. And what's interesting about it is they took the game off PlayStation 5 as well. Because like, I think the Sony store is all in one. Probably okay. very similar to the Microsoft store. So even if you have a PlayStation 5 where the game is playable or, or more playable, you right, you still can't get it. It's completely gone until further notice, right? So, move, Before we move on, moving on from... from can I just say, yes. I love the game too. Amen. That's yeah. what I, I love the game. I want it to succeed, can and I, it will. Can I ask a question? I just want your guys' opinion. Do you think this game took a lot of heat because of the success of Witcher 3? Well, there was... I mean, everyone that played The Witcher 3 hyped this game. Well, up. yeah. I mean, uh, uh, myself included. Then... When you go to play it, if you have an OG Xbox, yeah, and it's playing the way that it's playing, unplayable. Un yeah, you, I, you're mad. You'd be frustrated. Yeah. You're yeah. mad. You'd be frustrated. Because if you think back to the Witcher, because we got Witcher on day one, because we've been Witcher fans since uh, uh, two, uh, two since well, two. One, we went. Back uh, and yeah, one. I went back and played one, but we got into it after number two, which was an Assassins of Kings, right? Mm -hmm. and a really good one. And if you remember, like like we talked about, The Witcher had its problems at launch, too. Now, whether they were as bad as this, I mean, I think this is probably a little bit worse because it's unplayable on some consoles. But I think a lot of the, a lot of what, and like you said this too, Mark, a lot of what people are remembering about The Witcher is a year after release. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, I don't remember I'd be curious essentially on, the bugs. Yeah, and I'd be curious what? on the sales numbers on Witcher 3. 
when they peaked, when they bumped up, was it an initial pop Mm -hmm. at release or was it over time as word got out? Well, and keep in mind the expansions. I I have this in my notes too, but we never talked about it. Um, they're bigger than the base game. Yeah, Ooh, they're huge. they that blows they my mind. like well, add wine. two point five times the hours you put in it originally with, the, on a big game, right? And so, the thing is, is they're good. They're very good. <laughs> like Hearts of Stone was an incredible story. Blood and Wine was amazing. But and th- all that being said, I'm not. Th- David said this. I'm not defending CD Projekt Red in the state that they release this because I do think it's unfortunate, and I don't agree with releasing a buggy game. Well, there's one thing extent. buggy. It's another thing unplayable. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, bugs suck, right? I mean, yeah. I want to buy a game that works, right? Although some of the bugs are funny <laughs> like, and they bring joy to, to the game. A good majority of them hurt the immersion of the game, right? So I'm not saying buggy releases are okay because they're not. What I'm saying is in spite of that, the core of the game, Cyberpunk 2077, is still really good. And I'm very interested to see in the next six months to a year where this game is and, and what it brings. Sure. So, so the next three months to six months is going to be patch, 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 followed by an amazing expansion, followed by another six months, followed by an amazing Does expansion, this making this one of the best games ever made. That's my prediction. Okay, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Mm-hmm. I also am curious on the time frame. Does this push back? Us getting the next gen patch. I'm sure it does. Yeah, it for does. the next, which is unfortunate that, because it's unfortunate, but it's come on, I give give people playable games if they. Yeah. If I'm gonna, not going to lie. Gonna release it on those. I'm not going to lie. Watching this, this is PC with ray tracing, 4K, 60 that we're watching here. For those of you that are listening, it looks beautiful. I kind of want to wait. Yeah. For this experience, this, this is game is meant for new hardware. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is the experience I want right here. It's beautiful. Before, Sorry to take so much time, by the way. No, no, I think no, it's, I think it's appropriate, it. and I think it was needed. Especially it's basically all everybody's been talking about this week. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. before we jump into some of the next discussion points here, I, we did have some super chats that I want to catch up on. DJ Hero, thank you for the super chat. He says, a game about corporations taking over, being forced to be released by a corporation early. Irony? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. DJ Hero, Hero, thank you very much. Butt Pounder 420 says, I want this world with obsidian mechanics. That would I think we're I think what we're seeing going to see is worlds take on this next level that we're seeing here with CD Projekt Red, and that is very exciting. Yes. And, oh, sorry, I, I didn't know if you were done yet. I was just gonna <laughs> just waiting for. <laughs> I, I was just I was just gonna say just to Awkward confirm. Moment. David mentioned at the beginning of the patch that came out the one point zero five sure. for Cyberpunk uh, that came out today is it was a fifteen like, gig like we said it is a a. Bug patch, right? So just, just to patch. confirm that with you. It's so I think the one a on d- huge list I, of bug I fixes. I bet you I would be willing to bet. And this is where I think I'm a little bit more hopeful because the it's a big patch on the 23rd. I think... Is there another patch coming on the 23rd? Or is this the patch? This is getting? the big one. Yeah, the, the patch that you talked about. Well, no, no. I think this might be that patch. Oh, we, we were no, just, no. We I were thought just we were talking. getting another one on the 23rd. No, no, no. That was just what we were talking about before this patch came oh, out. We mind. didn't know the date. I, I'll mind. look it up. Never mind. We can look it up. We'll talk yeah. about it later. <laughs> the, it sounds like that's the pre-holiday patch. Everybody's going to go home for the holidays and yeah. then come back in January. Oh, I see. Okay. We just didn't know mm-hmm. when this patch was coming. Regardless, I would be curious if this patch fixed some of those issues on the Xbox, OG Xbox, and PlayStation. It's, I would imagine that's got to be the priority, correct? I mean, They're probably leaning you have that to way. optimize the crap out of it. I mean, 15 gigs dro- is nothing to shake a stick at. It's dropping to 17, <laughs> F- 17 FPS. Man. If it were me, if it were me, my priority, I don't give a damn about the bugs. My priority is getting it stable on those original consoles. Yeah, I think it's first a balance, and right? Because you got to, I mean. No, because bugs, bugs, you know, having someone, having someone float in front of you uh, every so often on a mission, that's. That's kind of par for the course. Again, in open world games, it's ridiculous, yes, but, but it's, it's... Open world games. But it's still playable. And yeah. that's... Whereas right now with frame rate drops and freezing and stuff like that, it's just not playable. That would be my number one concern. Yeah. I'd be curious if this patch did that. It is the end of the year, guys. Thank you, everybody, who has joined us over the year. Thank you, everybody, who's joined us. Uh, it was a big year. To recap, we started the year rolling hot and heavy on mm. Mixer. Oh, yeah. That's what a different life. Yeah. January was a different time. January was a different time. January to May was a different time. We were over on Mixer. Mixer no longer exists. It's no longer in the ether. If you go there, it sends you to Facebook gaming. Yeah, that's correct. And now we're on YouTube. 
And YouTube has been a big upgrade for the community. YouTube has introduced us to a lot of new community members. So welcome to everybody uh, who has joined I'm us. I'm gonna go this to the Mixer website year. real quick and see what happens. <laughs> I haven't been there in a while. It sends you I wonder if it still catering. redirects you or if they just got rid of it. But welcome and thank you everybody who has joined us as a member on YouTube, who has supported mm. us uh, over uh, uh, wherever you've supported us. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We love you guys. This community, 2020 is seen as like this crappy year of everything that's happened. And I think that the X1 Bros community has a, been a bright spot for a lot of members of the community, but for a lot of us looking to the community for a bright spot. So thank you everybody who has helped to make the X1 Bros community what it is in 2020 we're excited for 2021. We're excited for the community. We're excited for the direction, which is definitely up, <laughs> yeah. up and out yeah. for the X1 bro. So thank you very much. We, we appreciate each and every one of you. Let's talk about game of the year. Now, Oh, the X1 bros game of the year. Let's let me go over. We had, we, we had a question drop on the community channel over on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash X1 bros. And then if you go on the community tab, we dropped a question. What is your guys we want to know what is your contenders for game of the year? Spicy. Let's start with you. Do you want to do this or do you want to do the community first? Do you want to do mine first? Well, okay. Let me, let me pull up the community here. More, Cause I'm quick. curious. I'm curious. And if I forgot a game, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we we I have my list, so but I want to be, we're changed. just rolling through and there are some obvious ones. I mean, there's, there's some big ones. Slick and twisted said my vote goes to cyberpunk 2077. He says, I don't care what anyone says. I have had little to no problems with the game. Although I can't wait for the optimized version on series yeah. X. He is playing on the series X. I think overall it still looks great and feels great too. cyberpunk 2077. Isn't just, my game of the year, but it could be my favorite RPG of all time. Really, really enjoying it. New hardware. New hardware. I think that we, I mean, Spicy just said he thinks it's going to be one of the greatest games of all time uh, after after everything is fixed. So slick and twisted. There you go. Bradley Compte says he has enjoyed AC Valhalla. Is the, He's enjoyed that a lot. It's the most enjoyable game that he's uh, played this year. Pandemic says this technically released in 2019, but he wanted to mention it. Jedi Fallen Order. He loved it, and it's now on Game yeah. Pass. But didn't it so release a res- just a after the... It released end of November. So it wasn't eligible for the official Game Awards. And then what I are you talking about? We are the official We are, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We are the official. I think I'm putting we, that on my list. I think we actually... I think, I think I picked it for... It was in my top three, yeah, I believe. We, we gotta go picked back and listen, it last I really year. enjoyed it. Uh, see, here, here's the thing. Now, Captain Obvious said Skyrim because it came to Game Pass and he just started playing it. <laughs> Skyrim is amazing. Hey, yeah, that's good. That's a good one. I think you are eight years, seven years? Yeah, seven years. He, we found, are, he found a loophole. We are living in this in this world where we have so many games that are perpetual and that are coming with so many updates throughout um you know every year in and year out. And so the game completely changes. I'll get a destiny as an example of that. Uh but T B left a message and he said i just discovered sea of thieves my mate he's a normally a ps guy bought a series s just for it and we started playing sea of thieves that is his game of the year that's good, that's and good. that that totally to- absolutely counts uh we do have a watchdogs legion by Manga ah, kai watchdogs yeah ac origins uh brian f again oh we're doing are you talking about not game of the year now now it's like no this is still game of the year i think because of game pass People are hitting people the backlog. Are, people are hitting the backlog. Game of the year. Yeah. Okay, yeah, ex- yeah, that's how exactly. it should work. You yes. know? Well, that's the nice thing about Game of the Year is because every everybody's going to have something different, right? You know, yeah. I guarantee the three of us are going to have something different. We have we have a couple more cyberpunks that people left. A couple more Jedi Fallen Orders and Gears Tactics that by Killer by Killers that Haven. That was a really good one. Or Killers Heaven, sorry. Gears, Gears Tactics, Tactics which good. is really fabulous. Fun. Well done. In chat, Randall B said Ori and Will of the Wisps is up there. Mrs. McSpicy said Tetris Effect is my pick. Fantastic. Fantastic Will of the Wisp as well. Super Shocker says Game Eternal or Doom Eternal. It's his game of the year. Doom Eternal also another really good game. That brings us to Spicy. Mr. McSpicy, game of the year. Game of 2020 on the Xbox. The Xbox, I guess, technically be one, but, you know, we could go Series X because that released by the, before the end of the year. Can game I do of a, the year. Can I do an out of nowhere underdog for me? You can go an out of nowhere. One that surprised you. One that surprised me, but it's not my game of the year. Sure. But it's... Give it to me. Star Wars Squadrons. 
Ah, that, Very nice. You know, that, that, very is, nice. that was a surprise, that wasn't it? came out of nowhere how much fun I had playing that game. It was a very frustrating surprise, <laughs> wasn't <laughs> it? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm not alone. <laughs> Apparently, they're making DLC. And, yeah, and new a, maps and new stuff. New maps yeah. when they had posts where they said, nah, we're done. Yeah. Remember they when yeah, they released that? They were like, oh, yeah, you're, not gonna, you're not going to get that plane. Oh, what you shoot. see is what people, you get. People yeah. like this game. But now they are because uh, because it was excellent. Okay. So I did not know Jedi Fallen Order was in the running. Okay. I think you picked it last year, too, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I, so I, th- I, I think we all picked so it should in I, list, should I so. not I don't it? think we should include I, it, but I, I think, think it was my 2019. I think a lot of people included it because the Game Awards didn't include it last year, so... Okay. But if it was that good, you can give it two years in a row. So <laughs> this said, when I looked up games that came out in 2020, because I forget how many there were. Yeah, there's a ton. I did not. You'll have to tell me if this game was March of 2020. Okay. Call of Duty Warzone. Yes. Yeah, that was March. that was this year. I'm going to I'm going to say. I'm probably going to say that's your game of year. I don't blame you. I mean, when you look at what it's done for the battle royale space, I think it is the the top tier game right now in the battle. It is leading the charge in battle royale and changing things. They brought the gulag. They brought reviving your friends, dropping crates. They changed so much in that genre. You've got to give it to them. I think that's it because I went through the list and I I enjoy I like I enjoy Battletoads. I love that game, right? Gears Tactics Tactics was mentioned, really right? Good, Valhalla yeah. I enjoy. But I got to say Call of Duty Warzone just what they brought to that genre, I think it's it's I like it. it. That's Solid. It. Well yeah. done. Well well done. Jordan man. Yeah. Let's go to you. Your game of the It would have been Jedi Fallen Order, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I actually funny enough, I agree with Mark. I think Call of Duty Warzone well is done. probably I I put a lot of hours into it. It's really fun. I think they did exactly what Apex did when it released in Battle Royale. Changed, they, changed the For, game. Fortnite was the top dog, and in some respects they still are. <laughs> Warzone came out and it shook things up and now and now they're well, they're and one if of you the top, remember, now we were one, thinking, they're one of the top is, dogs. How right? is Call of Duty going to do this? How are they going to do it successfully? Yeah. And not only did they meet 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 expectations, but there were no expectations cuz it's like I don't know if they could do this. They exceeded every expectation. No, I they think. really did. They really did. And I think what does it for me is because this is what I was worried about initially is support for the game. They have continuously supported it. They've done Halloween events. They did crazy uh, story events leading up to Black Ops to get yep. everybody hyped, right? They did a lot of cool stuff, and I think they deserve it. Okay. It's 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 really it's really well done. Super shocker in chat says 215 gig game of the year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, but it's it true. is nice now that Black Ops came out cuz you can choose just to only install install <laughs> Warzone. You don't have to install the whole game. My game of the year is going to surprise you and it's because of the way that Game Pass works mm-hmm. and Game Pass for PC. Okay. This game is not on console but it is on the Xbox ecosystem. For me, it is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, okay. I think it is no, I, I, a top a PC game at the moment. I think that was it in my is. top three. I think it is. This drops on in summer of this next that's year, so one. technically, you could get two years in a row game of the year. But I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a console <laughs> seller. I think it's a Game Pass seller. I was a big fan of Microsoft Flight Simulator as a kid. This game is exactly what a modern flight simulator game should be. Is it's so much fun to fly with your friends. It's so much fun to just fly, experience the planes. Each plane feels different. It takes skill. Do you know what's fun to do in that game? Yeah. Just Google fun places to visit. Yeah. And then get the GPS, which you can't copy. So go to Google Maps, and then you can copy the GPS coordinates, and you can throw that into your flight plan, and then you can be there. Yeah. And you can... Yeah, you went to Chernobyl, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I did. That's that's not a very pleasant place. <laughs> I just say it. I you just go there. I heard it wasn't very good. <laughs> they are now. Was your, was your Geiger tr- meter <laughs> just <laughs> off the? <laughs> <laughs> they now do have some vegetation and buildings. Oh, okay. Are there-ish. There-ish. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, mutated an animals. That. Yeah, <laughs> mutated <laughs> animals out there. So yeah, I did visit Chernobyl because I was curious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but there's I that is extremely fun to do. Just yeah. To, I was like, I don't even need to go outside anymore. Well, and what's funny is with the type of year everybody had with travel being closed down, you literally <laughs> it was perfect. We're able to travel, you know, it was, it and was there great. is just something relaxing about 
sitting in the cockpit, you hear the sounds, you you see it's just mm. it's beautiful. It's it's a really good game. For those of you who don't have Game Pass Ultimate or don't have a PC to play this game on, I promise you, if you have a Series X, then they have said that this will be the be- as as good of a version as you would ever get on the X on the PC. It's coming straight over to the Series X. You're going to experience very the exact exciting. same thing. It's very exciting. And the fact on a controller it works wonderful. It feels good on a controller, so don't worry about that. You can also get joystick and and hold I, uh, I, I have my Thrustmaster. Thrust yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a pretty good setup. Yeah, I think that's nice. the best game for the Thrustmaster. Yeah, but that's games. my game of the year. I think those are solid picks. Warzone, Microsoft Flight Simulator. We've got. I mean, the community had some good ones. It's been a good year, really, for gaming. Which is, it's fun to look back and just see mm-hmm. how good of a year it's yeah. been. We also posted a question, guys. Over in over in chat on the community page on YouTube, since we are at the end of a generation, technically there's no more generations, but the Xbox One generation is over, and we are moving on to the Series X generation. We pose the question, game of the generation. Let's go through and read some of the comments from chat for those... Uh, or from from who from listeners who replied here. Sorry, praise the sun. He said cyberpunk. Other than the bugs, it's amazing. And McSpicy again reiterating the fact that you think that that is a true statement yet to be realized. Oh yeah, give it a year. Yeah, and 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 play it on new hardware. <laughs> Pedro Pedro Ramos says Red Dead Redemption is an amazing world, an amazing story. It was hard to play a game after that experience for a while. I would agree with that. The things mm-hmm. they did with the story in that. The emotion, especially if you were attached to Red Dead Redemption, the emotional strings that they pulled, and the, right there at the end, climbing that mountain. I'm the, not going to say what happens, but yeah. damn. And the intensity. It was a fantastic, one of the best stories that Rockstar has done, or the best story that Rockstar has done. That's an interesting question. I'll be honest. <laughs> I really like Nico from Grand Theft Auto <laughs> Four. Like yeah. I really like him. But overall storytelling, what? Where do you think this lies? Well, no, in it's this? just it's hard to say because it's it's almost a it's different like, story. T- I don't know because I really like the John Marston story in the first game as well. Yeah, that's a tough one. I'll really have to sit. Uh, that's like, sit okay, we'll come back to it. Yeah, no, sit and think about that. Think one. about think about like. I feel like you guys need to put on your smoking jackets. No, yeah, but I, I mean, yeah. a good, let's yeah. talk. Let's let's talk about directors with philosophical. Let's talk about like, like movie directors. When they're good, they're good, and they they. It's not like they can't make multiple masterpieces. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 and Rockstar, but if they yeah. tell good stories and they tell them well, regardless of what game. Yeah. Even their even the probably one of their worst games, which I was just saying something. L.A. Noir. I was just going to say L.A. Noir. I didn't. There were there were individ- okay. individual yeah, storylines that is, were interesting, but the overall story was like, meh. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like bad. It wasn't bad, but you, you take like let's let's go back to some of their roots, like the Warriors. Okay. One of my favorite games of all time. Of all time. Mm-hmm. It is so good. And they what they did, they took a game from a from a movie from the seventies, late seventies. And they filled in the gaps of what happened in different scenes of that movie. That's cool. And I actually didn't even know it was a movie when I played the game. That is cool. <laughs> and then I go back and watch the movie, and it blew my mind how good Rockstar took a game and then changed, added their own story to it and made the movie better because of how good they were at storytelling, right? Yeah. So what I'm saying is I think... I think a, a good cookie's a good cookie. Agreed. And I, I don't know if I can Agreed. say that. Now, we have special. multiple Game of the Generations. We have multiple people who at Red Dead Redemption 2. Well, so it was it's good. It's definitely top three, well, I think, they consensus did, wise. They did things in that game that attached you to. Like, for example, if your horse died in that game, it was gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Permadeath. That, that little feature, for me, attached me to my horse. Like, I had a bond with my horse. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and horse travel in that game was pretty vital because it was. It know, really was. It was. It was. You know, an open world. But I think there's only one other game where I've been that attached to a horse. Ah, uh, and I know what one you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, and I'll tell you, if anybody ever touched Roach, yeah, Roach. I went crazy. Yeah, you, The Witcher Three. Yeah, that's the only other game yeah. I've ever been like, this is my horse, get away from me. And I love <laughs> how get Daryl, Daryl's back. like, yeah. I name all my horses Roach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. Y- <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. If anybody uh, comes close to that horse, yeah, you yeah, that's tear funny. Him a new one. Now we have a lot of people that again, a lot of people said Red Dead Redemption two. I'm gonna mention one in here, Titanfall one. Uh, Doom, Master Doom Chief says it's absolutely the best Titanfall game, and it was very underrated. It was. I recently, it, really was, yep. uh, it recently got brought to Steam as well, and is doing pretty good. Titanfall, it, very underrated shooter. It, it. When people say, "Oh, well, I'll just play Apex," if you go back and play it, it has a different feel than Apex. Apex is an evolved feel of Titanfall. Titanfall has Titans that drop, which is just this crazy gameplay mechanic that works, and it works really well. Again, we got it. We did get a couple Titanfall two twos. Destiny. We got, I think there's a few Destinies in there as well. We got yeah, Destiny. I actually think Destiny would be up there Which for if, a if big you remember because it changed. I mean, it has defined a generation yeah. in all reality. Well, and if you remember, people were giving it, in hindsight, in my opinion, maybe a little bit unfair review scores. Yet it was the most played game. Yeah. Every time you logged on to your Xbox, right? Yeah. So agree. That was an interesting. Uh, hey, one. Trish actually said Destiny Two for her is one, and last last but not least, we had Brian F who said PUBG for the battle royale genre. I think PUBG has defined yeah. a generation of gaming as well. And gamers, they did. They were the original, absolutely. And they just they're updated. They just brought a new map to their game and everything yeah. this week. I mean, so it's when you look back at the generation of the Xbox One, it's ripe and it's rich, and there's a lot of fantastic games there. We Super Shocker in chat says Rainbow Six. Span pretty much the entire generation, generation. Yeah. yeah, and still going, <laughs> still going and going strong. I think and, it's 120 frames. It's on one the of the X funnest now. competitive shooters. Super Shocker says Grand Theft Auto Five as well should be in there. Technically, that's a last gen game that has spent two but generations. It released, it released it a did. version on our, on the new and gen. Grand Theft. I actually think they're going to have a mobile o- version. Soon. Grand Theft Auto Online re- really releases Generation Two, and again has defined a generation. In that style of gameplay as well. So many games. Mix Spicy. I mean, you've talked about this. I think we know both Spicy and Jordan's answer. Let's start with Jordan then. Spicy well, I mean, first, you last all, time. You all know my answer. I, I Mark said it earlier. It's one of the greatest games ever made. I think it's a, one of the greatest games ever made. And that would be The Witcher 3. So, which is kind of ironic considering the predicament that CD Projekt Red is in right now. But <laughs> which, which remember, <laughs> it wasn't the best when it launched, but uh, it became the best later, right? No, so. I, I, I think that game was was. I know they've said they've made statements like they want uh, Cyberpunk to be their crowning jewel of this generation, and and in the future that very well may be. But I think that game is the crowning jewel of that their that studio. You know what I mean? It is. It's amazing. it's fantastic. The way the story interweaves with the side content, the way the quests interweave with the main story, I think we can all say the Bloody Baron quest line is is one of the best quests that leads off to, into. Well, it's also my opinion one of the best side quests in a game ever made. That right? quest, that's what starts you out. David's played it like fifteen times. <laughs> I have. It, it I have like you. thirty hours in the well, game. Just and I've the amount of like quest. moral and eth- ethic shock of choices in a terrible yeah. time. In a terrible place, it's almost like there is no well, good choice. And that that quest alone. And the reason I bring that, that one up, the Bloody Baron quest line. That quest alone, I came into that quest not liking that guy, and through the character development of that quest chain, by the you end of it, go okay. I guess. Like he was, <laughs> I kind of he was he was a friend. You know what I mean? You get the character development of that game with just side characters is phenomenal. The way the the way the world felt alive when you'd go to the cities, even out in the wildlands with hunting beasts. We actually talked about this because we were playing Cyberpunk. We were talking about the Codex. In The Witcher, <laughs> yeah. it was the same thing. It was the bestiary. And what I liked about The Witcher is a Witcher is a monster hunter. So let's say there's a griffin over here that we got to go hunt. You actually have to go into your bestiary and research and read about the griffin to figure out its weaknesses. The game doesn't just tell you. You and- have to go in and read and research... <laughs> And basically, you're a witcher, right? You have to do your job to efficiently defeat this beast. And what's amazing about that game, which I don't think any other game did, is you played that monster once. (laughs) You know? Like, you have to do your research and take out this monster. But you really... It was not repl- It was not a repl- you know other games you would play. You'd you'd be introduced to a character or like an a, a baddie, right? A, a a monster, and then you'd see like fifteen hundred of them for the rest of the game, mm-hmm. right? This you have to do your research. You have to figure out its weaknesses. You prep for it. You fight it. You beat it. You take the trophy. You bring it in. You get money for it because people hired you to take out that yeah. monster. But then, 
you get to do that again with another car- like another bad monster and then another monster and another monster mm-hmm. another monster and there's no repeatability it is completely playable from start to finish because and you're never feeling bored because they don't just re- play the same monsters over and over. Does that make sense? No, no, that makes sense. Total sense. Well, and, and like you said with Cyberpunk, the voice acting was really good. They told an amazing story. What gives me essentially, I, I guess, the best word hope for Cyberpunk is what they did with The Witcher Three. The constant updating, what they did for the community. How many free DLCs did we have? We had multiple quest lines, armor sets. T- if you download The Witcher now, you're downloading a ton of stuff that was free. And then you had your paid DLCs, which, in my opinion, aren't DLCs. They're expansions. They're expansions. They're full-on expansions. Hearts of Stone. Again, top-tier writing. Very well-done story. Blood and Wine, I thought, was the better of the two. And that one was just fantastic. You go to a, a, a new land, Toussaint, which is completely, what would the word be, contrast to the land that you spend the whole game in. So during the... It's pretty. <laughs> yeah. yeah Where, during, whereas like the during, Bloody Mary area. The, during the main game and even on this, uh, what is it, Skellig Islands, it's a very war-torn area. And then you go to Toussaint in the second expansion and it's it's like Spain. Like I think it, I, th- I think they took inspiration from like a, a Spanish vineyard type thing. It's very pretty, colorful. It's a complete contrast. Again, with another fantastic story, they added gameplay elements into each... I think it in my opinion, is the greatest game ever made, all said and done. As it stands now, it's it's fantastic. And it's I, I think it's a game of the generation for me. Yeah, I mean that's so. a solid pick. A lot of people picked that. I can't pick that as my game of the generation. Then you're wrong. Well, because you, you, <laughs> because <laughs> while I do you have, overplayed the Bloody Bear <laughs> mission. <laughs> well, I do have 30, 30 hours in that game, uh. which in a lot of games I would have beaten. <laughs> <laughs> I have never uh, made it past. I have beaten the first Bloody Baron mission, and that's basically where several I've ended times, every right? time, several times. And I've done the Princess Goat mission several times as well. Which, Another good mission, which is a good perverse mission, <laughs> but good nonetheless. So I, I'm taking a little bit different of approach. I have recently this. I think this past generation for myself. I have really been reintroduced. As a kid, I used to play these games all the time, but I I feel like I've been reintroduced on the Xbox One to racing games. Oh, yeah. And so my game of the generation is a game that I think has has really set the tone for the ultimate balance in a racing game, and that's Forza Horizon 3. It is, in my opinion, the best racing game. You say Witcher is the best racing game of all time. I think Forza Horizon 3 is the best racing game of all time. RPG of all time. RP- Although there is a horse race in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, RPG of all time. I, I really do believe Forza Horizon 3. I think Microsoft has strengths. They have weaknesses. Xbox has strengths and weaknesses. I think their strength lies in the Turn 10 Studios, uh, Playground Studios, Playground Game Studios, Forza series, mm-hmm. with the balance between simulation and the Forza series, arcade slash simulation options open world in the horizon racing series now forza horizon 2 dropped on the xbox one it was okay but forza horizon 3 just seemed to find this sweet spot forza horizon 4 was really good it just couldn't find that sweet spot that forza horizon 3 found you it was a world that you wanted to explore with vehicles that you wanted to play and get and earn fun fact in forza horizon 4 right now you can get the cyberpunk vehicle if you'd like to get that. And and it's just this continually support of of that. I think they set a standard with Forza Horizon 3. I think it's the best racing game of a generation. Now, do you guys agree with that from a, for, as a racing? I would racing say game? that's fair, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I Forza Horizon 3. Now for, uh, so as good game. as for, Forza Horizon 4 is really good, but a lot of people weren't introduced, to, didn't play Forza Horizon 3, and were only introduced to Forza Horizon 4 and love it. As someone who played Forza Horizon 3, Forza Horizon 4 has some flaws that that just Forza Horizon 3 was perfection in mm-hmm. in 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 every in every aspect of it. It was so, the pinnacle. Yeah, it it really was. Great discussion, great can question. I, can I say cuz yeah. we know mine is Witcher 3. Yes, Witcher I'm 3. Go ahead and say, I want to say some games that uh, I really enjoyed. Oh yeah, there we go. That stuff. that you Real think quick. are contenders? For the Some for the generation, or this is just games that you enjoy? Well, like I'm gonna throw out a name here that uh, I'm sorry, but Stardew Valley. Oh, I yeah. have to mention Stardew you Valley. Do, that is true. That gets that's kind of underrated, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, for a game that was made by one person, Agreed. and and that looks like it was made from 1993. 
the game is an amazing game. And I have to say that because I have purchased this game on every device that I can game on. I Very few games ha- can do that. I think, I, I think Skyrim is another one, and I think Grand Theft Auto V is another one that I pretty much purchased everywhere, right? <laughs> so uh, Stardew Valley, my golly, that... That man that the build it, Chuck, it was Chucklefish that produced it, and then uh, Concerned Ape was the, the guy who made it. An amazing game. Um, yeah, I have to mention that. Also, I have to mention, although they're kind of tripping at the finish line right now, I really like Overwatch, but uh, Grand Theft Auto V is on my list as well. That said, Witcher 3 takes it. Over Has Overwatch seen a... Nope. A decline? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how big of a decline? As big of a, as a decline... Like, is there a parallel, and are they related to the Overwatch decline and the Hearthstone decline? Oh, yeah. The, the parallel is Activision Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> but are, are they declining at the same rate, or is Overwatch not as bad as, well, as... Hearthstone, three months ago, was in one of the best places I think the game has ever been in. As far as balance, gameplay, what was available... Then they come out with they're they're just taking some heat because they made some really stupid decisions with their big update on achievements and uh, how they're doing how they're dealing with gold and their battle pass technically what it's called they're just they're they they screwed up um, I, everybody who plays Hearthstone or who has ever played Hearthstone be sure to log in right now just log in yep You'll, they're giving out the sorry stuff I'm sorry five hundred gold and five packs so. <laughs> So that's 10 packs, essentially, right? So yeah. Just log in, because they're doing their whole, we're sorry, <laughs> stuff. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, that's that's. it's just interesting to see kind of a little of the shine rubbed off on, on, on Blizzard with regard to certain certain games. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that's, a, that, I mean, that's that was a good, that was a good question. That was good. Uh, generation game of the year, or game of the generation game of the year. Let's move on to the questions. These are this is our last question segment of 2020. 2020. <laughs> <laughs> nice f- job. There you go. Our first our first question comes from Blake guys to submit a question. You can do so each and every single week over at youtube.com forward slash X one bros. Hit the community tab. And as long as you're a member, you're able to submit a question. We try to pick out the best questions. We get a lot of questions submitted, so we we do pick out the best. So if you have an interesting question, please come in. We do read all the questions, and we appreciate it. Sometimes we get multiple of the same questions, so hopefully we answer your question in doing that. Blake writes in, Barbara Blake, and says, At the beginning of the year, Jordan set a goal to beat one game a month. This uh, led to the birth of the game club. It really did, which we do have. Uh, So did Jordan reach his goal and beat at least one game each month? This year, twelve games. Do you think you beat twelve games? I no. think no, I didn't. I, I, oh, you didn't? No. Yeah, I'm I think you've beaten like that. five games I, in the last week. I think yeah, uh, you have pushed through. No, I think I did it for like the first six months, and then I was like, yeah. <laughs> hey, you made it six months. Yeah, six yeah. months is pretty good yeah, for a new year's I, resolution. I remember I wrote down each game I beat for that month, and then I was like, I was like, yeah. Okay, but <laughs> did you? But did you still beat a game a month, or did you just stop tracking? It? Um. Because I like Spicy said, I feel like you beat I like five games this month. I don't think in I would November, consider you you beating Vigor, for instance. I guess, but I don't have all the achievements yet. See, that's you're that's setting a high yet, standard for so. yourself, brother. Well, I mean, how do you beat a multiplayer game? You do everything in the battle. I mean, pass. I guess I beat I beat Black Ops last <laughs> month, and then I beat Modern Warfare when eight. Well, that was last year, right? So you got to look um, up how to solve a Rubik's cube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's that. That's, there's that. Achievement. There's that achievement. Well, I tried to cheese it, but they're smarter. Because I was thinking, like, what if I just like turn it and then turn it back? I mean, technically, isn't that solving it? But now they get you. They make you, you shovel actually it. Have to yeah, solve yeah, it. Have to shovel it. Yeah. So how many? No, games? I mean, I beat. I think I. I think I beat. I beat a few of a few games this year. Give me a number. How estimate your number? I think I did number. like six. Six. Yeah. So at the six month mark, you just stopped. Well, I didn't just stop. I just like did stopped you beat pushing Valhalla. No. Yeah, see, okay, let's I go, lost respect. Let's yeah. go multi. So, but here's the thing: you play a lot of multiplayer games. Can't see, that's you, the problem. Can't you consider some of those being beat? Uh, no, I mean, can you? I think so. For so, for instance, have you gone as far as you can in a season of Apex, for instance, or no? You Tarkov can go further. Or, see, the the way they design it is so you can't can't complete. do it. <laughs> yeah, you can't they complete specifically it. make it so the character <laughs> there is no is always right here, yeah. regardless how uh, far you are. Yeah, they can't do it. No, there was there's a lot of fun games like Ori. We beat that one. That one was really fun. 
Yeah. Although frustrating for me at certain parts. Well, there you go. Blake, great question. But yeah, no, I didn't beat I, I did beat a good half. I think I beat like six games this week or this year. This thank week. thank <laughs> this year. <laughs> uh. Thank you very much for writing in, Blake. Appreciate it. Great question. Psychotic writes in. And this actually is a question that we got from multiple people. I believe Blake Jen- Jen- uh, Jenkins also asked this question. But Psychotic says, Merry Christmas, bros. Thank you for another fantastic year of positivity and awesome content. You guys really make a difference to the community in a huge way. Well, thank you very much. Psychotic, kind words. He says, my question today is what are you most excited for in 2021? Is it a specific game, DLC, or something completely different? Thanks for everything, and keep up the great work. Psychotic, most excited yeah. for in 2021. Yeah. Jordan, oh, you me? looked like you were going to say something. Oh, no, I, was just, I just was agreeing with you. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am most excited f- to start... Uh, Get ray tracing into games on the Series yeah. X. I would like to see it or ray tracing whatever the AMD version of it. Because is ray tracing technically NVIDIA? No, it ray tracing is it is it is a, it's it's like a, a hard, industry term. At a yeah, at a at a very basic level, it's hardware acceleration for lighting. Okay, there we so, go. I would I like to see, so for instance is, is for instance, NVIDIA, Minecraft, we have a great is. Minecraft server that will just revive my, our Minecraft server, in my opinion. And you'd want to go experience that. We were watching Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing turned on, and it's like, whoa, I just, I kind of want to wait for that now. You could go back and experience a game like Red Dead Redemption that would completely change the way that that game looked and feel as well. Ray tracing is a big deal, I think, the way that lighting is handled. And I think I'm I'm, I'm most looking forward to that in 2021. Sp- okay. That's spicy. Fair. Spicy. How about you? Anything stand out? I don't Initially know. Off the bat? So I'm a, I'm a man of basic needs and impulses, right? I, Do you think we'll get E3 back? Because is that something that we're looking that forward was, to? I hope so. But I think it's going to take some, I don't know. I think we got another year yeah, I, I hope and so. It, if it might not even come back in that way. What's the need? Yeah, digital. The digital, it's just cheaper for businesses. They and can you control can the message. Control it a lot more. And you don't got to talk to people afterwards. Yeah. I mean, that's That alone. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. There's, I mean, it's cheaper and more effective. Why would you go back to the old way? There is something about the hype of being together, though. It's like but a sports game. Watching, watching college football or English premiership. On sure. TV versus being in person, it, it it's the atmosphere. But that atmosphere is not what E3 is. It is for me, for us consumers. Yeah. But E3 is a. It, it's a yeah. It's a. Consumer. It's a handshaking like, deals being or made. Or at least it used to be. <laughs> and a yeah, and a hype creation tool. Yeah. And you don't need us to, to create that. that. Yeah. So it's unfortunately it's more of a fan, a fan festival might replace it. I'm with you, but I think when it's cheaper and more effective, why would you ever do it the old? Well, way? and even even all the handshakes. So I had a friend that I used to work with uh, at my old job. He he worked for uh, I think it was a company that did a lot of porting for the DSs. Okay. Basically, E3 would come along, and his boss would come back and be like, "All right, guys, I got all our work for the year." Like it was just it was that's where you made all the deals, right? I think that which is primarily what E3 was really for. You know, in in the past few years it's kind of it's turned into more of a fan thing, which I think is good too. But I think all that handshaking stuff can now be done over Skype. You and know right. what I mean? Like I, it, I think it's, it's 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 hard. I mean, I don't necessarily want it to go away cuz I have fun going to well, the it conventions, can adjust, you know though. what I mean? Instead like, of yeah. being about those deals and it kind of has morphed into that. It it morphed into a fan fest. Yeah, yeah, it really has. Which I think is Honestly, just as effective. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. But you can, I mean, if, if it's a hype building tool, you don't need. You can create your own hype in your own yeah. pre-made videos. Yeah, you but know, it, but look, look at a Backstreet Boys video from so do you think it's a, Do you think it's so? Let's just take Microsoft. You just get screaming girls all around them, <laughs> and hype is magically. But created. let's but let's talk. Let's talk. For instance, Microsoft, who has the Microsoft Theater in in Los Angeles. At E3, do they lose money or do they make money? Well, I mean, they still have to pay to go there, right? I mean, it's their theater, so it's cheaper. No, uh, no, I understand that, but look at everything that is sold during that time. Does that does like merchandising? The, oh, yeah, does that justify? Does what I'm saying is, do they make money from? Is it a net cost? Is it neutralized? Is it a net positive? What do you th- What do you think? I, I would be curious to know that because if it's if it's neutral or a net positive, then yeah, why not do it? 
because you're creating the hype and the excitement you're creating the hype, your, you're, your brand, creating right? excitement. which is which is worth money in its own right. Yeah. No. Well, just you can create hype without all the expenses. Yeah, but is it? That's what I'm curious. What is the expenses versus what is the? Because you, you, it's, it's well, I get what he's saying. I'm more likely to buy a T-shirt at E3. Well, you bought a hundred dollar bomber jacket. I did. I'm more likely. Still wears it yeah. to this Still day. Way, yeah. I'm I'm more likely to buy that at E3 while I'm waiting in line or looking at stuff like so that. So are than thousands I am of like, other people. Then I am at like oh oh the end of the trailer. There's a T-shirt. Go buy it. You know what I mean? Mm. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. But does the so co- but I does get that, the merchandise? But does thing. that offset the cost enough? That's the yeah. The city of L.A. wants E3 to be there for sure. There's no doubt about that. I mean, that's a big driver. Look how many people are there in that week's span. Uber wants that for sure. Uber wants that. Yeah. The homeless people. <laughs> they may not there. want it. We're kind of stepping into yeah. L.A. should rename itself Night City. I firmly, I am all for that. <laughs> <laughs> because it is so reminiscent of Night and City. And what a map. Dude, and it would make me, it would make it like a tourist destination for me. I'd be like, yeah, we're going to Night City. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, Great man. question, Psycho. What's Jordan. funny is the AI in, in L.A. is probably similar to what we're getting. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, I don't know. I mean, there was that whip guy. <laughs> that guy was Jordan, pretty intense. Yeah. tell us. Most excited for 2021. Oh, I think there's two things I'm really excited for. One thing we talked about earlier, I am excited to see where Cyberpunk 2077 goes with the new update for the next-gen consoles. Sure. And if we do get any expansions within the next year or so, right? We'll, we'll see how that goes. One thing I'm really excited for, and I, I'm kind of, I, I kicked myself because we didn't talk about it last week, but it was showed off at the Game Awards, and I feel like it flew under the radar, but I think this is the one one of the most exciting things coming, and that's Back for Blood, which Back is Blood, Turtle yeah. Rock Studios, the guys that created the original Left 4 Dead stuff. Yeah. They were able to, se- I think Valve still owns the Left 4 Dead name, but they were able to separate and be their own company again, and they're making a new game called Back for Blood, which is essentially... Left for Dead Three, yeah. right? The alpha was this week. Okay, I didn't get in, but I got to see people play it. It looks awesome. It looks really fun. I don't know if you guys remember Left for Dead, but I feel like Left for Dead almost did what Halo did for the original console. We'd go over to people's houses and you played Left for Dead. For, you had fun. from a multiplayer from a multiplayer per- party game. Yeah, it definitely. I don't did. think it quite did like the the amount no, of what of Halo not. did, but it's similar. Left for Dead was all people talked about, and it was really and everybody played Left for Dead. There was, there was people that have never played video games before. They were like, oh, let's play Left 4 Dead. It's really fun. Like It was just a fun co-op experience. Then you had Left 4 Dead 2, which built upon all that fun stuff. And I'm really excited for the original developers. They didn't get the name, but that's okay. It's essentially the same game, Back for Blood. Yeah. Right? That really excited exciting. for this game. It's coming out next year. Actually. Early next year, too, I believe. So I would like to change my answer or add to my answer. Before I say my answer, are you going to take my answer? I thought you said I think it. maybe he will. I haven't said anything. Okay, go ahead. Halo Infinite. Oh, oh, that's, that's, I, want, I want that to be really Because I got I got something that you guys are both about to say. Yep, you're right. Okay. Crimson Desert. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, see, good. instant. Look at that instant. Was, that's pretty good. That game Woo. Does, hits me in all the right spots. Woo. I am so excited for that game. If you've not seen the It'll trailer, be delayed. Crimson Desert. I'm calling it now. It's going to be delayed. Uh, go watch. <laughs> I'm going to plug ourselves. Go watch our reaction trailer when we see the trailer yeah, for the yeah. first time. It, it's on our YouTube channel. It is on our YouTube channel, and it's amazing. And then you will agree with us. You will agree. And here's the thing, because Pearl Abyss is known for Black Desert Online, which is an MMO, and this is a single-player RPG with multiplayer elements. Whatever the hell that means... <laughs> I am very excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it means co-op <laughs> missions. It I don't know what it means, but I want it. Amazing. <laughs> to me, it means, yeah. or, or or why can't it be this? And this would be, I think, a great way to do new MMOs. Right. Single player RPG all the way up until end game, and then you've got multiplayer dungeons at end game. I'm gonna pull that it would up. Be cool. I'm gonna pull it up right now. That would be really cool, don't you think? Or am Wait, I? Wait, what did you just say? It? I was focused on something. No, pro- else. no problem. And I really want Jordan's opinion on this. If it because we we know it's single player with multiplayer elements, mm-hmm. or MMO like elements is what they said. I think specifically. What if it's single player RPG, intense story, gameplay, leveling up your character, skill trees, the whole shot with the in the world that we see, and then at end game. That you unlock, that's it's multiplayer dungeons, or even it's not end game, but throughout, whenever you go into a dungeon, I mean, it's that a looks multi like simulator, right? There. <laughs> that's, that's good so, stuff. Whenever, <laughs> but whenever you go into multiplayer, maybe you do mul- dungeons as a multiplayer main game campaign, dungeons, yeah. multiplayer. That would, that be, would cool. be cool. That'd no, be a that'd cool be really hybrid cool. way to do it. 
Yeah. I yeah, I'm really interested because they did kind of it was almost kind of worded interestingly. It, it was because yeah. it's watch the multiplayer elements just be like you can send mail to each other. Or you just <laughs> or we just see each other's orbs. Yeah, Ambien or Albion orbs. <laughs> yeah, Albion orbs. Hey, there. I do I do want to say. Okay. Mark said it, and and I feel like I should say it. I'm really excited for Halo Infinite as well, but. Joseph Staten, did you see the quote that he came out with talking about Halo? So he he got to play the first day on the he talks about the first day on the job where he plays the the entirety of the campaign. And I just want to read that statement just because I think it's really important Go ahead. and and very exciting. So Joseph Staten, for those of you that don't know, is the guy that they brought in to help with the Halo process. So he said, "Quote, my first week on the job, I played the entire Infinite campaign twice. I was in a world stunned in the best way possible." by what the team had done. Infinite is by far the most expansive and vertical Halo world ever. Why did the team do this? Because they understand that wonder and freedom are key to the Halo experience, end quote. And then he goes on to talk about other stuff. But I that that's exciting. That gets you excited. That, that gets you excited. That gets you hyped. We do know Halo's coming in fall 2021. That is exciting. And they're working on it. And we did just get a whole bunch of drop about You know what else is coming in fall of 2021? Like Crimson, Crimson Desert. Desert. Yeah, what we're looking at right yeah. now. And can we can we fast yeah, I'm forward? Gonna, I know to you right want the dragon. There. Right, no, no, back, back, right about, right in there when the fighting starts. Oh yes, the fighting in this game just does it. Oh, and then he's building his own, his own, his own bridges. There's puzzles here. Yeah, it is. It is going to be. Glad that you're describing what you're looking at in it's a video just, to all kayaking. our listeners. I mean, who doesn't want kayaking in a high that fantasy big game? Troll Look, there's the, the dragon. Back. Oh, and then when there's this this archer, it looks like a ranger type of class, and he ropes two guys, and then like rips their head off with the rope and shoots them. And look, oh. at the, look at the, mo- the dire wolves. Yeah. I mean, they're taking some Game of Thrones dire wolves <laughs> right there. Game. Oh my gosh! Look, it, it does everything how you would I want think it to I'm be. I'm most done. excited for this. I don't even care if there's a good story in this. Just let me play this. Just let me ride that dragon. Just let me ride that dragon. Look, <laughs> lightning literally hit that dude's sword, <laughs> and he's and he just looks at it like, yes, I am powerful now. I believe the fighting scene that I'm talking about is coming. Are you right. talking? Uh, we skipped it. No, no I, yeah, no. we skipped it. This is the end. No, it's right here. Watch. I think in the snow, right? With the No, we no, no, that's we where we started. It was in the uh, snow. We can pull it back, but I well, want to no, hit the dragon. Keep, just keep Cuz that keep dragon going. Cause fight. Cuz this minotaur scene. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yes. He's on the back of a minute there Look it is. And he's flying a dragon. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyway, a lot of what stuff time to be excited frame? about. That was four minutes and 45 seconds if you want to see, the, want most to see the most epic dragon. dragon fight ever. Anyways, there you go. The most exciting. Great question. Thank you very much, Super Shocker, uh, or sorry, Psychotic, for writing in. Thank you. Blake Jackson, I th- believe, also asked that question. So did a couple other people. Next question comes from Welcome Home Sanitarium. He says, I've been listening to you guys for over a year. Yes. And I just joined the membership last month. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Welcome Home much. Sanitarium. I believe he was in chat today. Uh, he is. Oh, He's there he is. He's here in chat today. He says, I have a two-part question. Number one, what is your favorite supervillain? Mine is Omega Red. He was always a handful for the X-Men and especially for Wolverine. And number two, what supervillain would you like to see a, ba- a game based on? Myself, I would love to see one on Omega Red. Have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you very much. Welcome home, Sanitarium. I'm going to demure to Spicy and George the Man. Super villains. So I have an answer that's pretty common. Okay. And I kind of want to force myself to not say what I'm going to no, say. say it. If it's coming I mean, for a reason because it's probably legit. I think the Joker yeah. is probably like a favorite super villain. Is a favorite, and uh, there's so many reasons why. I mean, he's His no he's dark not, he's not like line. He's not like Galactus or whatever, you know, like yeah. power wise, but he's just he's a he's great villain. Dark, he just likes funny, to watch gritty, the world burn. Gritty and yeah, he's just he is a good villain. S- villain. And uh, I kind of don't want to give that as my answer cuz I sure. want to stretch my brain and think of okay. it outside of that. Outside right? the yeah. box with a You know what I'm going to say just cuz I think okay, it'd be interesting and I don't know how you'd make a game around it, but I'm going to say Galactus. He literally eats worlds. Yeah. How do you make a game out of it? How that? do you beat that guy? Yeah. How do you? Well, it's it's, it's been done. <laughs> <laughs> but um Yeah, there, it's good. There is what, probably what be, someone what, outside what of the box. What would be a good game for you a You want to know so, I mean yeah, Deadpool. I don't Well, yeah. Deadpool. But the last Deadpool I made was a very, very terrible game. <laughs> <laughs> um what I, I like about my favorite heroes are not related to power level. Okay. Like, at all. Sure. I think if you're looking at, like, pure stats, uh, and, I mean, the Joker, he really 
He's just a dude. Yeah. With a bad, sick mind. And I think it creates the best storytelling, the best dramatic things that could happen, the, the, the stresses of being a hero, all that stuff, right? And so that's that's kind of why I, what I like in a villain too. You know what I mean? Like I I think when told correctly. Now, I'm I've been very I've been vocal about Superman not being my greatest favorite hero, but Lex Luthor, the fact that he can take him on. Yeah. Oh, chat just talked about Lex, yeah. Lex Luthor. Yeah. The fact that Lex Luthor can take on the most powerful being mm-hmm. ever. Essentially, uh, yeah, you have bigger, yeah, you got, you got, you, okay, okay, just don't worry about all those other high tier, you know, sure, heroes, right? Sure. Um, but Lex Luthor, time and time again, takes him on, and I think that shows, that shows guts, kiddo, you know what I mean? Well, what's interesting about their dynamic is he doesn't beat him by brute force, necessarily, because you can't. He's right? a tactician. He, he beats him with his intellect. Yeah, so he's it's, a tactician. It's a, very, it's a very cool story, right? Fitzy like, said... Yeah, so I was gonna say it's it's similar to like Joker and Batman, right? Joke, uh, Batman is order and Joker is chaos. It's almost they're they're you know it's the opposites, right? So and that would be mm. another one. I mean, Batman technically is sometimes the bad guy, if you think about some <laughs> of the things he does. He's technically a vigilante. <laughs> <He's> technically. <laughs> Fitzy in chat says Lex Luthor the whole game. If you played Lex Luthor the whole game, would be about building up your company and creating ways to defeat Superman, <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> it correct. would be it would be a corporate yeah, sim. corporate tycoon. Corporate tycoon. <laughs> Corporate tycoon. Oh, that would be awesome. Simulator. Uh, like, yeah. Wait, did you did you say like football simulator? Like, but with Lex Luthor. Yeah, as, with Lex, yeah, Lex Luthor. Yeah, that's awesome. That would be hilarious. <laughs> great, great question. Welcome home, sanitary. And that's welcome. a good one. I want to think on that more, and maybe at post show after the show, we'll get into it a little. Yeah. Bit. Great question. Colin Crable writes in and says Xbox created the initiative to be a new quadruple A studio. And now that we know they are rebooting Perfect Dark, what are your reactions and thoughts? He says, I have no nostalgia for the IP, but if it is an awesome game, then great. Still, I'm left thinking the investment and high pedigree hires should be making an IP of their own. I don't necessarily disagree with that. I completely, I'll start with me because I have zero experience with Perfect Dark. Mm -hmm. Someone, let me tell you the perception of someone like me. It feels like another shooter I, at its core. That's another shooter. And I have granted, again, I have no experience with Perfect Dark. If it is a fantastic game, it's a fantastic game. I'm hoping that it is. From what everybody says, they're super excited about it. But I, I, I agree with someone that has no nostalgia for the game. I see where, where um, Colin is coming from. And I agree with that sentiment. It's just like, eh, I... What what are you gonna do that's brand new? And if they're able to do, maybe they take take the first person shooter genre, and they they shift it in some way that just blows our minds. Yeah. That I think is what it's gonna take. I think it's very hard. So for instance, Doom and Wolfenstein, grade A first person shooters, but there's a ceiling there, and there's a ceiling because at at, at your core, there's not. Games that get generational games are games like oh, like a Witcher, like you said, like a Grand Theft Auto, like a Red Dead Redemption. Games that are doing stuff, God of War, the games that are doing stuff that haven't been done before or they're doing it at such a high level, it seems like it's not been done before. Yeah. I just don't know if you can do that with a first-person shooter in 2021, 20, 22, 23, unless you, dra- you do something that changes the entire genre itself, which you guys said kind of the you original Perfect that. Dark did. Well, no, you can't change the genre because the genre is the genre. Well, but you you adjust it. You do but, something brand new that's never been done before within the genre. But keep in mind, people play first person shooters because they like first person shooters. It's the reason there's not a lot of development. One of the reasons there's not a lot of development and I guess progress in that genre. And one of the biggest progresses is is like modes like battle royale, right? Yeah, but. It is because it is what it is, you know? It's like it's like a formula that just works. And if you go away from that too much, it doesn't work. Yeah. And you're going to lose your audience because your audience is very specifically looking for that formula. It sounds weird, but it's kind of difficult to open up the first-person genre to different ideas without alienating those that don't want those ideas in there. I know that sounds weird, 
And I know that you're yeah, looking at... We, you know, I, I get what you're saying, but we don't know what we don't know. And we, we don't... we Sure. You, you know what I mean? So that you can... I get that. We yeah. can... You can do... You can do GoldenEye, right? We didn't know that we would love... Well, Four player, multiplayer maps on the same thing. That was a new concept. And then perfect. So did Perfect Dark change anything from that or just perfect it? Because that's the other well, model. Perfected the Blizzard Dark. model to do to just per- simplify and perfect. They added guns and they added maps and then they added campaign. But it was kind of the same campaign. It was you're a double agent or not a double agent. You're, you're a, a secret, a secret agent. And it's actually, but it takes place in the future, right? So yeah, this is in the future, and it's sci-fi-ish, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, see, even that that formula, it's we're not we're not trying to make a Citizen Kane here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we're, you are you are when like the initiative is your marquee studio getting sure. grade A writers and talent, and and maybe that's it. Maybe what we've just not had for a while is a next tier. God of War esque story well, driven uh, game. So first person shooter. Yeah, single player campaign, have an amazing story, have the story be good and have the story be great and have the story be amazing. That's how you get people to buy that game. Yeah, I agree with that. However, for first person shooter, for perfect fart dark zero fans, fart they dark. W- fart dark. Would they not want to see multiplayer in that? Oh, I'm sure there's going to be multiplayer 100%, in this yeah. game. Yeah. Maybe that's where, and maybe that's where you bring in a new. Right. G- Take on the genre is in well, a multiplayer, I, a new multiplayer I, mode that's super fun. I yeah, I there's got to be multiplayer, right? I mean, why one hundred percent not yeah. be? I mean, one hundred percent. I guess they could just do split screen. <laughs> like, like they they don't do then. that anymore because <laughs> yeah. because the games were so demanding. Uh, back in the day, they were only running at like two eighty yeah, p. You have to you have to render it four different times. Yeah, it's rendering four different squares or whatever. However many more players. Uh, now they put all their balls I, in I one. W- I will say, did he talk about? Um, but he he asked the question like, do we want this or would we rather see like a completely original idea, right? A new thing. Well, he just wants to know our thoughts and reactions to Perfect Dark being the big game from the initiative, yeah. which is supposed to be. Remember the news. N- the news was that Microsoft went to the initiative and said, "How much money do you need? Unlimited." Yeah. Here's the deal. Okay, I like brownies. Okay. Okay, I really like brownies. When I'm looking to get a brownie, guess what I want. A good brownie? I want a brownie. (laughs) When you put in nuts in that brownie, it ruins my life. You know, you're they're, you're trying. They're they're technically trying to upgrade the brownie. Let's talk about. Let's uh, for you with brownies. For me, it's cookies and oatmeal and raisins. Don't do that to me. Okay, I'm just saying it's not an upgrade. Just when I want a brownie, just give me what I want. I want a brownie. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. Sometimes some, and I've had this before, where they. Make the brownie, and then they put marshmallows on top, and then they put it back in the oven, and the br- and the marshmallows get golden brown. Mm-hmm. That was an upgrade. Or molten chocolate inside the brownie. Yeah, an upgrade. So different take. But but some people might like the nuts. See, as the upgrade. at the core, it's still a brownie. Yeah, but. I was with alienated a, with a twist, but I was mm. alienated, and I don't want any of that brownie now <laughs> because it has walnuts in it. Mm. You see, yeah. so would you almost rather some of these uh, Microsoft has some of their studios make original IPs? I th- I think, I, and I think that's what Colin was getting at here. Yeah. I well, I agree. I think that stu- I the studio that's the marquee studio and has been at the forefront yeah. and all the talent that they're getting from Rockstar and from um, Naughty Dog. I mean, this is the studio. Yeah, it, it it's just like perfect. Mm. Perfect Dark? Okay, we'll see. I mean, It was a yeah. beloved series, and it's old enough to not alienate most That's people. That's a good take. Yeah, yeah. That's an interesting take. Yeah. Well, because I just, I, I just wonder, Microsoft does lean heavily on their established franchises. Sure. Right? I mean, look, we're at Halo 6. We're, we're going to be at Gear 6 on the next game. Forza, I mean, we have a lot of those, stuff like that. If you look over at Sony, I would say, I mean, maybe not every... Well, I, I would say at least once during their generation, they have a completely original idea. On the PlayStation 3, it was The Last of Us, right? Sure. What, from their from their first party stuff. So we're just talking about first party stuff. This one's... Sp- Ghost Spider- of Tsushima. Spider-Man, Spider-Man Ghost and Ghost of Tsushima. Well, I mean, do you think Microsoft should maybe task one of their studios to... Well, I mean, they, I guess with Bethesda, you have Starfield, I mean, which is I'll a new you, original Well, I'll idea, give you an example. Right? When we saw... Outer Worlds. We saw just a... T- oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, Outer Worlds. Yeah. Avowed. We saw a teaser of that. Avowed. Yeah, no, I, I guess you're right. Yeah. I guess it just, so takes, doing, it just takes time to They're come. doing that. Yeah. But the initiative is the big boy. Like, yeah. And then a lot of attention is put there primarily because of the talent that they've been getting. 
So it'll be interesting to see. That's a great question, though, yeah. Colin. I appreciate that question. Thank you very much for writing in. Our last question of 2020 comes from Colm Brown. He says, hi, bros. Firstly, I just want to wish you all a happy Christmas and hopefully a better 2021. Amen, brother. Thanks for all the awesome content you have made for us over the past year. It has been an absolutely pleasure to listen to you guys. Thank you very much, Colm. Appreciate it. He says, my question is, with the recent controversy over the state of cyberpunk at release on consoles, does this make Stadia a viable option? It seems that as long as you have a good internet connection, you can experience this game in its best form without the need to buy an expensive PC. Could this be Stadia's time to shine? Thanks again, Colm Brown. That's an interesting point. And I think that's kind of the future that we're leading to. Leaning or leading? I get you. Getting into, starting so, to get into. Can I stab at this real quick? Go ahead. Spicy. So my initial thoughts on this is I think it is a place for the stadium to shine. However, it still requires people to purchase something that they haven't already had in their library of stuff. If you're not already a stadium member, right? Um, which people that have generally people that have the OG Xbox that has all these problems anyways, they're pro they're maybe they're looking to get better hardware, but odds are they they either can't for specific reasons, maybe their kids and their parents don't get it for them, or maybe they're they're crunched for money. You know, maybe there's a whole bunch of scenarios. But I don't I don't see it for a lot of people having that get people to buy that over other things. Agreed. If that makes sense. Yeah, agreed. I think that's the the selling point is hard for Stadia. I think the overall concept here. Colm is is you're correct. I think it does it does open up an opportunity and kind of gives us a peek into the future mm -hmm. of the ability. For even let's talk about X Cloud for Microsoft to say, hey, look, if you're on a note, if you if you have Game Pass, play on X Cloud. I just don't think m uh, enough consumers are aware of that at this point. Mm -hmm. But I think there will be an instance like this in the future where you're at that tipping point and it just needs an event like this to push everyone sure. to that X Cloud. I, I don't think X Cloud is still X Cloud Stadia streaming games that way is is still in in concept form right now for most people because they've not experienced it. It's not something that's happening on the regular. As that becomes more on the regular, an event like this mm -hmm. could definitely push, I think, yeah. everybody over to the streaming side yeah. of things. Literally every YouTube ad I have been getting has been Stadia. Yeah, that's interesting. And they're pushing it. They're pushing it hard. Yeah. So maybe maybe that that maybe that's well I maybe they need he, he to says to the it, show and my, my only, do a cyberpunk my ad. only yeah. thing of my only issue is why I don't think it's as big as, you know, consoles. Well, I mean, anyway, he says it interesting. It seems as long as you have a good internet connection, you can experience the game in its best yeah. form. I Starlink, think that's, baby. I think that's a big part of it. There's a lot of people that have excellent internet connections, but there's also a very vast majority that do not have yep. good, they're good enough, dirty connection. Basically, yeah, good it, enough to connect online and play online games with your friends, but you're talking about streaming, which is a completely different animal, and you're talking about streaming a game, which is also different than streaming just a movie to stream a game at its full potential like a game like cyberpunk you're talking about a good handful of bandwidth consistent bandwidth and well, the right? driving already is delayed yeah. like <laughs> that, i never mentioned that in the review but there's like a 200 millisecond delay from when you turn the wheel from when the car turns so that's multiplied yeah, yeah i think with streaming we're on the cusp of it. Uh, yeah, I do too. We're, we're I at think the beginning of it before there's going to be a tipping point, and that tipping point is bandwidth, infrastructure, yeah. and and we're just I we're internet, getting there. Right? Yeah. Because when I was when I was in the internet industry, we got to see statistics every once in a while, like from the FCC and all different companies that would do. And it was I, I forget what, it, but basically, there's a lot of people like in cities, suburbs, and stuff that do have very good connections that can handle this stuff. But there's also a very vast majority. The majority which, of people. Well, I, I mean, I, I think was it the majority? It, it was. It was. I think it may have been that are in rural. Well, how do you say that? Rural. Word? Yeah, that that word. Rural. Areas. Whoa, whoa. Or just in areas that don't have the super high speed connections to handle. Let's just say I don't know what Stadia is necessarily streaming the settings at, but let's just say 4K gaming via a stream. Streaming a 4K video is pretty demanding in itself, and I think streaming a game is more demanding because it's it's immediate input and reaction, whereas a movie is just plain, right? I mean, I may be wording that weird, but it makes sense yeah, in my head. Yeah, it does it make sense. sense yeah. 
So anyway, I mean, streaming of let's say a 4K game, I mean, that's that takes a lot more bandwidth than you think, and Col- a lot of people unfortunately don't yeah. have. Calm. Yeah. That's a great question. It and is a great it's, point. It's interesting. I think that's a great point that if you could st- really streaming the game is the solution. <laughs> To a lot of the issues, yeah, there. then it issues. could be. Yeah, it could then be. you only have to release it to one platform. But then yeah. you are, you're introduced to more bikes <laughs> yeah. on a bike game. Calm, great question. Thank you very much, everybody. That's us for 2020. It has been a year. It has been 2020. December 2020 looks vastly different than December of 2019. One year ago today, the X1 Bros, completely different place, completely different trajectory. It has completely shifted. It has changed. It's an exciting change. Thank you. Thank you guys for all of your support. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the kindness, the positivity, and the community. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. We love you guys. We love hanging out with you guys. Any final words, guys? Any final words between Mark, Jordan, before we head out? Before we hit that button and drop out of here? We'll be playing more games No, I'm week. I want to say you already said thanks, but really... People that support us blow my mind. So, I I we we we've tried to get like advertisers and stuff in the past, right? You know all that stuff, and I just think the the people that come that are in the chat right now that support us and those mm-hmm. on 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 our, every way that you can support us, even by sharing this show with others, uh, it blows my mind. So I'm just really it has been a journey. Yeah. Six years. We're coming up on our seventh year. The entire Xbox One generation is behind us. We had a good base, set good base, made some waves in the community, got to meet lots of interesting people, yeah, movers and fun. shakers in the industry. It has been a blast. 2021, here we come. Do not do not forget, the next two weeks we are off. Christmas, New Year's, January 8th, mark it on your calendars. That is when we're back. Don't forget, everybody, come join us on YouTube. Hit that notification button. Hit that subscribe button. Be notified whenever we go live, when the stream goes live. We'll see you next time, next year. Bye-bye.